it's still not quite it. Uh, it's not doing it either. That's probably gonna work. Hey everyone, I just added footstep sounds to my game, uh, Jetpack Miner. It's a Godot engine game, so if you want to check out how to add footstep sounds to your game for your characters so they feel more realistic and alive, uh, stay tuned. Alright, back on the computer, the first thing you want to do is go to a website called audacityteam.org and download the software program called Audacity if you don't have it already. Audacity is a free open source piece of software that you can download for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and you can use it to open sound files, edit them, and save them again in different sound formats. After that's installed, the next thing I'm gonna do is open up the sound file that I just recorded on my phone of my footsteps and see what it sounds like and see if we need to clean it up. Here's the sound file I recorded of me making footsteps out in the gravel. Here's what it sounds like uh, without any kind of edits. You hear that kind of a in the background? That's the kind of ambient noise that just simply exists out in the world. Um, and we want to kind of clear that up so that way there's no kind of noisy background sound between each individual footsteps. We just want to hear clean footsteps. So once again, for comparison, here's what it sounds like without reducing any of the noise in this file. So now to reduce noise in a file in Audacity, we need to generate what's called a sound profile. This will tell Audacity what noise sounds like. And then it can look for the noise and remove it so we just have clean footsteps. Here, let me show you how. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find an area in your sound file that has noise in it that you, that you can use as an example of noise so it can get rid of all of that noise in your file. So let's see here. So we kind of want to do it in between footsteps and the way an easy way to do it is just select an area of sound between footsteps and when in audacity when you make a selection like this you can click play and it will just play that selection so there's a little bit of a footstep sound there so let's try and move the beginning of this area up a bit see if that sounds like just noise that sounds like noise it doesn't sound like a footstep it's just noise and it's very small, it's a very quick sound, So, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and go to Effect, and we'll go to Noise Reduction, and then we're gonna click Get Noise Profile. It's gonna take this little area, uh, the highlighted area here, and it'll use that area as the noise profile so it gets an idea of what kind of sounds it should get rid of. So we're gonna click Get Noise Profile, and the box goes away. So now we want to basically select everything. Now that our noise, pro now that our noise profile is generated, we're gonna select everything, go back up to effect, go back down to noise reduction. Now we've got our noise profile, so now we're going to use it. It's gonna just automatically use that noise profile to reduce the noise. Let's see what that sounds like. It's, you can still kind of hear the background noise. You can turn it up. You can play around with the noise reduction decibels, the sensitivity. Let's see if we can just play around with these real quick and, and get a, a better result here. That's better. There really isn't any noise in between any of these footsteps now. And so we click OK, and it will go about reducing that noise for us. So now, if we want to play it again, Let's hear what it sounds like. Yep, you can clearly see all the footsteps now in the sound, in the, in the waveform of this sound file. And you can see that there's really no noise in between each footstep. Some footsteps are louder than others and that's, that's fine. That's how they're supposed to be. But now there's no noise in between each of these footsteps. We just cleaned it up. All right. 
So next we just wanna take each individual footstep. We just wanna grab some individual footsteps to kind of give us a, a bit of a variety of sounds because we don't want to hear the same footstep sound over and over and over and over again. I'm just gonna find some footstep sounds in here. And so here's, here's perhaps one. Uh, let's go ahead and play that, just this and see if it's a footstep. Yep, that's just one footstep sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, Control C or Command C if you're on the Mac. And then with that copied, I'm gonna go File New, and there's probably a better way to do this, but this is still quick and easy. Uh, file New and just paste that, that one footstep sound. See, there's just the one footstep here. And I'm gonna go to File Export. Export as Wave. I'm just gonna give this a name here. I'm gonna call it Footstep One and then click save. All right, so now with that footstep saved, I'm just gonna close this window. I don't care about these changes, it's just a little footstep. I don't need to save a whole project file just for a footstep sound. I have this master footstep sound here that I can always come back to if I need to. So with that first footstep, I'm just gonna grab a couple more, like maybe this one, see what that sounds like. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it's a footstep, but it's not very, impactful it just sounds like a thunk it doesn't sound like a footstep in gravel maybe this one's better yeah you can hear kind of the rocks moving in this one so i'm going to grab that one and what about this one here it's just kind of another thunk maybe this one we might just have a couple thunks and that's it That sounds pretty all right. It's a decent variety of footsteps. What about this one here? Eh, maybe this one. Yeah, that's good. So I'm just gonna grab these and create separate files for them like I did that first one. And then I'm gonna show you how to play these in the game so your character makes these footstep sounds when he runs. Okay, so the first thing we we're gonna to wanna to do back in Godot is we wanna create a function in GD script that we can call with our animation player that will play a sound. We just wanna be able to call this function and have it play a footstep sound, a random footstep sound. So let me show you what that looks like. So I've actually created two of these functions, one for the left foot and one for the right foot. Now, how does this work? I've created four footstep sounds, footstep one, two, three, and four. And so the first thing we wanna do when this is called is we wanna know which footstep sound are we gonna play? Are we gonna play one, two, three, or four? And there's a bit of logic that I put in here to kind of give it a random sounding feel. So, so for example, the first thing we do is we generate a random number. It'll be zero, one, two, or three. And so that'll map over here to the specific wave file that we want to play for the sound. So we first generate a random number, uh, 0, 1, 2, or 3, and we save it here in this ran footstep variable. So now to make sure that the this sound that we're playing isn't uh, the same sound we, we just played previously in the last footstep that was made, we're going to compare that to last step sound. And so if the ran, random footstep sound is the same as the last one that was just played, we're gonna generate that random number again. And so while that random sound is the same as the last sound, we'll just keep generating a new sound to play until finally that random sound is not the same as the last one. So once we have a new footstep sound to play that was different from the last one, we convert that to a string and use match to match the basically the number that we generated. Now, it's interesting because the match statement doesn't work on numbers, so you have to match it against a string of the number, and then you can use match to uh, determine which sound you wanna play based on the string of the number that you, that you generated randomly. And so by the time we get down here, we know which sound we're gonna play. And so since I made two functions, one for the left foot and one for the right foot, I just called them play footstep and play footstep two. Left, one for left, one for right. And so in this play footstep function, once we figure out what sound we wanna play, I've got the first footstep uh, audio player as a variable here. 
and we just tell tell it to play because in this match statement we're setting the we're setting the stream of the audio player to be the sound file we want to play so by the time we get down here and we hit play on that sound player it already has the file loaded that it wants to play so it just plays the correct sound and lastly we take our random number that we generated and we store that as the last step sound so that way next time we play a footstep it'll play a different one and so we've got this all set up for the left foot here i did another one here for the right foot this uses another uh, audio player and uh, it's a different audio player so that way if there's still a footstep sound playing on the first audio player by the time we come down to the second footstep sound we can play that on a different audio player and this sound won't uh over won't overwrite the the first sound that plays so we actually get to have one audio player for each foot uh, of the character and they can both make sounds at the same time just like in real life how, how about that and real quick, I just want to show you how I got these set up here. So this is my this is my minor character. He's a kinematic body 2D. Um, but when I go down here for my minor character, I just add a couple audio stream players. These are audio stream player nodes. I call it footstep player. And then the second one I call footstep player two. I could have called them footstep left, footstep right, you know, whatever, but you know, you know how development goes. Uh, sometimes you just go with it and it's not ideal, but it works. So with these functions in place, all we have to do now is call them and uh, they will play a sound. So how do we call them? Well, we go over to our animation player here and we have to go up to 2D mode. So now we can see our character, we can see the animation player. The animation selected is the run animation. Um, so if I drag the, the playhead here, you can see him running. And we want to play sounds when his feet hit the ground. So right now, let's see where we want it to be. Uh, boom, probably right there, right there. So that's where we want to, the first footstep to play, the first footstep sound. So what we can do is we can add a track to our animation and we want to make it a call method track. And when we make this track, we're going to select our main minor, the, the main character uh, that you want to have sounds play. This Basically what you're doing here is you're selecting the node that has the script attached with those methods that you want to call. And so if we hit OK, now if we go down, you can see we've got a new function track added to our animation. And the playhead's currently where his footstep is hitting the ground right now. So right here where the playhead is, we can right click near it, click insert key, and we get brought up with a window of all the script methods that belong to that node we selected earlier, that minor node that I selected. And so if I scroll down, you can see here, there's a play footstep method. There's also a play footstep two method. And so I'm going to do play footstep for the first one. Open that. Now you can see that it's a little bit glitchy because it didn't get added right on the playhead for some reason. So I'm just going to drag this back over to the playhead, more or less. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the other foot. So we'll scroll through the animation. And boom, right about there. That's where we want the other footstep to happen. So with our playhead where we want it, we're going to insert key and pick play footstep two. And once again, we gotta drag this back over. I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, we gotta drag it back over to the playhead where we want it, right there. And back over in our game, we'll restart. And let's see if we can hear footsteps. Very good. All right, that's all there is to it. That's how easy it is to add footstep sounds into your game that you can make yourself. You don't need to go anywhere else. You don't need to spend any money. 
on any sound files, on any kind of professional sound effects. All you need is your phone and a free program called Audacity, and you can make nice, clear, clean, footstep sound effects for your game. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did take any information out of this that was useful to you, please hit the like button and the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I make more videos like this. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you very much and be excellent to each other. I'll see you next time.